John Mayer, analyst at Fairfax, joins us. Hi, Johnny. Happy New Year to, do, to you. Um, so, Alcoa, yes, it was a loss. Yes, it was in line with estimates. Yes, we know that prices of aluminum or aluminium did tumble. They fell by 18% last year. What's the outlook for Alcoa and its primary metal? Well, if you remember, Alcoa was always the, the business school model for, for how to run a company, the, the full integration right from the, the stuff out of the ground to the end product, the window frames and aluminium products. Clearly, the margins in that business have been squeezed massively, and I don't believe it's the, at the mining end. They are suffering some rising costs, particularly energy costs. Uh, energy is about 40% of their cost base, so that's, that's huge, and that runs right through the production chain. Uh, I think the mining end is still pretty, pretty profitable, although they are closing some of the, alum the higher cost aluminium production, and, and we'll see lots of aluminium producers do that around the world, particularly in China, right, where about a third of their industry is, is unprofitable but that's at the raw aluminium end. Where I think they've really been squeezed is on the products, the building products. And Of course, Europe's going through its own debt crisis yeah. at this stage. This is the impact of that debt crisis. It's the same as we saw in the States just after Lehman's went down. Have you been deterred today by that news out of China, the import-export data? Does that change the game at all or not? Not overly. I think, I think you know, we've got, a, we've got a year ahead of us, and China is a, is a wild card, and it's going to be variable. But I think, I think they're still going to look to grow their economy. And I think that, that we'll see imports and exports start to balance a bit more later on in the year. And there's a trade gap. Got it up for you there on our screen. I mean, you, you, your feeling about the base metals, John, is it, it's not too bad. I mean, copper, for instance, fell 20% last year. You say it's going to track sideways before a demand recovery later in the year. And that seems to be your analysis for the base metals. What's behind that? That's right. Well, China imported a huge amount of metals a year over a year ago and then of course this year's numbers look a little bit worse compared to the year before that I think we're now seeing some recovery last month's copper imports were very good numbers again uh, we're likely to see those numbers continue to grow again Q4 uh, Chinese GDP another good number so the, the economy there is growing yes Europe is going to slow down and we're going to see some some wobbles there and I, I think manufacturing in Europe will suffer alongside the Alcoa numbers uh, and Alcoa did a very good job of talking the market down there, I think. You know, that's, so the market shouldn't be over su surprised. Yeah. But when we look back, track back to the miners, I think we're still going to see a good earnings season for, for the Rio Tintos and BHPs and of the, the world. stocks last year suffered along with the economy. Uh, might they have a better year? Yeah, I, th I think a lot of that is built in. Yeah. Depends a bit on what happens with, with China, and we'll see when they come back from the new year how, how the commodities markets will go. But commodities prices are robust, and if anything, this new carry trade, money being borrowed in euros and then put into hard assets, is likely to benefit commodities going forwards. Fifteen seconds on gold. It's going to hit a record this year, you say again. I, I, think, I think the price will rise, certainly. Yeah. I, I mean, we wouldn't look for it to, to smash through $2,000 an ounce that quickly. But I think uh, the, the crisis that we have, plus the ongoing buying from Chinese commercial banks, yeah. from Asian customers in general, uh, is likely to push prices higher. John May, thanks for, for joining us today. John there from Fairfax.